In this video, I'm going to try to make a custom head tube badge for my Schwinn bike here. This is the Trash or Bash, no, Trash or Bash uh, bike build off bike, which didn't make it to the final round, only made it to the semi final round. But um, nevertheless, I want to finish the bike off, and there's a couple more things, such as this head tube badge that I do want to finish. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to Eric at Spindat for putting the event on. It was a lot of fun. It still is fun. We're having a good time in the uh, Facebook group still. I've actually met some friends in there. So yeah, big shout out to him for putting the thing on. Like it's really been awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this basket out of the way so we can access the head tube. Okay, here's kind of the scary part. Um, this before was using rivets basically. Is rivets, is that right? Pop rivets. Uh, to hold the original badge in. Let me grab the original badge so you can see it. This was the original. Now I did flatten it out, so it goes like that, and I removed the paint. It kind of looks cool, and I could put it back on. Problem is I don't have a pop rivet machine or device that'll do rivets that small, and I don't really want to do it that like that anyway. I'd rather have bolts that I can unscrew and screw back on as I need. So what I'm planning to do, and I hope this isn't a total mess up, but I'm planning to drill and tap these two holes so that I can change the head tube badge out anytime I want easily. And I have been messing with making different head tube badges. Now this one's kind of messed up, but uh, basically it's a piece of very thin aluminum that I painted and then used the laser machine to etch the same logo. And then this one, which I think the one I'm gonna use today, it's also from the laser machine but I, uh, it's obviously out of very, very thin wood, so it, kinda, it can kind of bend. Oh. <laughs> just as I said it, I just cracked it, so we'll be making another one now, and hopefully I can more slowly, delicately bend it to the shape and uh, bolts it on. But the main point is, is that I wanna be able to change these out if I want to, without having to take the whole headset off and you know all that stuff. So let me go ahead and try this. I do have the right size um, drill and tap here with me. It's a 632, number 632 tap, which I'm going for. And this bit is in Imperial units, it's 0.116, I believe, of an inch in diameter. This is what I had. Yep, kind of the scary part. Now, I'm a, one thing I'm a little bit afraid of, let me know what you guys think. Is there any kind of risk like putting chips down, down here into the bearings? I, I could imagine that might actually happen, but we're gonna give it a shot and if I feel anything weird or whatever, you know, it's a trasher bash, so it's not the end of the world if I screw something up, but. There we go. You could feel it gets, you could feel it stop and hit the, uh, the actual fork inside pretty shortly. There's not a lot of extra space. So that's it. Now I have my larger holes and let me go grab my tap. All right, here we go. So this is it. Now this tap scares me a little bit because it looks like one I would see more on a CNC machine. So <laughs> I hope I don't screw it up. I hope I don't break. It's the only one I have of this size. Well, let's just give it a shot. Of course, this is a steel frame bike, so we're not dealing with aluminum here. Hey, we're moving. Oh, shit. There goes the tap. Okay, so I broke the tap. I was afraid that was gonna happen. I don't think those type of taps are really too recommended for hand tapping. Tell me if I'm wrong, anybody. Now I have to try to get it out. That's the worst part. Without screwing the bike up too much, that might be very difficult. Oh, it's very brittle. That is not, not good. Okay, I think the I think the best thing to do is go ahead and take the fork out so I can get to the back side of this tube and maybe, maybe I'll be able to work this uh, broken tap out. Uh, yep, that did not even, it, it did, you know, I can feel it on the inside, but it's not nearly enough to, to work backwards or anything like that. 
It's a darn shame. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get that out of there. Probably gonna have to watch some YouTube videos now. Okay, I found something that I'm having a little bit of success on. I found this uh, like soft steel pin and I, I filed it into a point and just started trying to beat up the tap, hoping to break it away and out, oops, and out of the hole. And it looks like it is kind of breaking up. So let me show you how it's how it's going. I put a new a little bit of a new point on there because it was getting pretty blunt from all the from all the work so far. And I'm, the only reason I'm showing you all this is because you know why not why not learn from my mistakes? Carbide taps not good, especially small ones especially delicate ones with hand tapping. That's my lesson I've learned today. I already knew it. It's one of those things I'm like, I kind of think I know better, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah, there we go. See how it's getting, I can even feel it on the inside. It's getting pushed in. I need to get, now, now I've ran out of you know, punch here. I need to really file this down to a point or maybe find something. I, I think I'll find something, just hang on a second, that I can, uh, Get that in there the rest of the way. This may not work, but this is a very tiny nail. I'm going to try to see if I can punch it the rest of the way through with that. Yep, there it goes. Wow, that was easy. Now the bad part about all this is this hole now may be too big. It looks kind of like it is. Uh, so I may even have to go with a larger hole now. Let's see if we can get a measure on it. Well, maybe it is okay still. If I measure the other, I got 0.12, so just a tiny bit oversized. Oh, 0.116 if I do it that way. This one, I got 0 .1, 0 0.102 for some reason. 0 0.106. So from what I'm seeing is its size is still 0.111. Its size may actually still be okay. Okay, I figured while we're waiting on the tap to arrive, and it should be here tomorrow, by the way, I thought, why not go ahead and get this pizza boxy install insulation that it should have. A lot of people in the comments and others told me I should do insulation on it to keep the pizza, obviously, uh, warmer, and I thought, why not? That actually does make sense. Luckily, my dad had this uh, insulation, like in his shed, you know, when I told him about it, he actually said the same thing. He's like, well, maybe you could use some insulation. Luckily, he had some, just like probably gonna be the perfect stuff. And it's just the right thickness. The pizza box will fit right in there. This is just a little sample piece. Here's the big roll. He said I can cut what I need from it and use it. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna use these, I can plan to use these little tiny screws here uh, to just screw it in at the front. Probably will be just fine. And anyway, let's go ahead and measure the depth multiply it by two, add in uh, whatever that is, two or three inches, and that should be pretty much it. So I'll just measure a couple, hit a couple places here. 14.5, here we go. Maybe I'll do it every foot or so. 14 and a half. There we go. I've never used this insulation stuff before. This stuff cuts really easy. I think it's more or less just plastic and kind of like bubble wrap. Kind of like bubble wrap basically. Cuts real easy. Okay, let's see how that fits. snug but it fits pretty nice that's actually nice that's gonna help a lot I think it's not very often that I need this extra long screwdriver but this is actually one of those rare occasions that it does come in handy because with this uh, door only opening this far 
it was kind of hard to to do this, but now it is easy. Let's see if the pizza goes in now. All right, not bad. There we go. Cool. Sorry, I screwed up the packaging so much. Anyway, I got my tap and drill bit kit for about $4 shipped. This was the drill. It should be the same size as the one I have. Yep, no problem. So now let's see if I can tap this thing with this tap. Now this tap, as you can see, is a bit more, uh, I don't know, <laughs> little more durable looking so I'm really hoping it doesn't break certainly you can you can break these ones too you can break any tap especially small ones but uh, it should be more durable first of all it's not carbide which is going to be very uh, brittle so this is high speed steel it should be a little bit less brittle and it doesn't it's not it, I don't know what to say there's more to it so anyhow let's um, you know what before I get started I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, the fork out so that I can go all the way in not worrying about bumping it. There we go. So I have the fork out of the way. Let's go ahead and attempt to tap this once again. All right, it's definitely engaging. I can feel the, I can feel it cutting already. I'm being extra careful this time because I do not want to have to buy another. So I'm just doing a little tiny bit of a turn and then stopping and going back and going forward. I could even add some lubrication to it. That might be smart. Just a little bit of old motor oil. Not old, new motor oil. Okay. I'm not putting much force on it. I think we're doing pretty good this time. Okay, the camera stopped for some reason while I was recording, but I did finish the tap, no problem, and this, this bolt should go in. Yep, no issues. Perfect. Although, I guess, yeah, it's definitely too long, so I need to find a shorter one because that will collide with the fork. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and tap the other side, but before I start, because I broke a carbide bit in there, uh, I'm going to try just to do everything I can to make sure it's actually has nothing left in it of that, of that tap. All right. I think, I hope, we're safe. Okay, it's through, perfect. Gonna drop a, whoa, that actually came out way more than I thought it would. There we go. I suppose that looks pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and put the handlebars back on. Okay, have it all back together and I think it looks pretty good. Well, 
Let me know what you guys think. Do you like the aluminum one better or maybe the wood one would have looked cool? Let me know in the comments. But anyway, that'll about do it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.